What's going on everyone, Gilman with Live All These Stocks back with our daily Apple update video where we take a look at how Apple stock traded today, key levels of support and resistance that we are looking at as well as some pieces of news that I'd like to cover. We'll take a look at what that means for the stock moving forward. So real quick, if you enjoy videos like this, don't forget to hit that like button down below, subscribe to my channel if you are new and comment down below what your thoughts on Apple are and I'd love to chat with you guys down there. So let me hit record and we will get right into it. Um, but real quick before that, if you guys didn't see from my video yesterday, I launched a Patreon. Um, over there I'll be talking about some other trade ideas that I have, stocks that I like, um, names that I'm playing, as well as you know options contracts that I'm looking at. So I'll alert those on there. Um, if you'd like to sign up for that, link will be in the description below, as well as um, I know a lot of people ask what I'm using here uh, for my videos. I'm using Webull. Um, if this is something that you like and you want to start using it, the link will be in the description as well. We both get some free shares if you use that link to sign up. So let's get right into it. So a little bit of a green day for Apple, but pretty much flat if you consider the after hours as well. Right, we were up 15 cents on the day, um, but we are kind of you know up and down in the after hours. So not a crazy moving day for Apple. If you guys remember on Friday, we bounced right off of this 136.05 level. And in the pre-market, things were looking kind of strong, right? We were in here in the upper 136s and then um, you know open and you know right out of the gate textbook kind of what we've seen over and over again for not just apple but a couple other stocks that i cover as well um is that you know we sold off kind of bounced uh and sold off until the 134.93 level so broke below our 136 and then we pushed up we were barely able to break it above this level bounce off vwap pushed up this 136.90s and then from that time that time on right it was pretty much bouncing and kind of hanging around this 136.05 level and then we pushed up into the close so things that i like today um, is the fact that we ended the day kind of strong right at the near the high of day we were above the vwap which is something that i really really like seeing things that i didn't like today obviously is that we didn't really go much and if you um, take a look at the Nasdaq right almost up a percent the Dow Jones up um, computers a little slow right now I don't know why uh, 235 points and then the S&P was up about 0.72 percent as well so on a day like that right Apple didn't do a whole lot which is not something you know super exciting as you can see now we are red on the day right with the 19 cents we are down after hours so that right there is not you know not not great news for Apple let me close um, my tasty works and maybe that'll help us here a little bit and make the computer a little bit faster. Let's take a look at some key pieces of news that came out. So the first thing that, you know, came out was that Hyundai key slash Kia and Apple, the deal that was kind of rumored last week, right? With Apple putting a couple trillion dollars into investing in Kia for their Atlanta factory so that Apple would be able to produce cars. Um, is no longer in the works um, and that as we sort of expected right wiped a lot of market value off Hyundai about six percent or so um, so that's something that we are um, you know expect we were expecting but at the same time um, they said we are not having talks with Apple on developing autonomous vehicles if you guys know from Apple Apple is very very secretive in everything they do right so they don't let us know ahead of time kind of the technologies that we are supposed to be expecting iphone macbooks we do get a lot of that because of you know either leaks or rumors and a lot of times that's correct right so apple was actually kind of upset at hyundai based on the reports that they let this leak even though afterwards they came out and said no you know we're not necessarily talking with apple you know too late kind of because they that at some point they admitted it so i think that kind of annoyed apple i'm sure um but you know they did they did say this earlier um they are in discussion early stage nothing has been decided that's what i think sort of ticked apple off maybe but we'll see how that goes as of right now though assuming that that deal is dead another piece of news that i want to share um well before we get that as I'm, I think a couple of you guys pointed out, right? Apple didn't really jump as much on the Apple car news and it didn't really fall either based on kind of the, the deal being next. So I think if we get some sort of like 
hey, yes, Apple is making a car. It'll be 2024. Here is the rendering for it. Here are the specs. I think Apple, you know, game changer for Apple. But I think that these rumors, unless they're somewhat more concrete, it'll take a little bit more to move Apple. So another thing is Apple got a uh, price increase. And let's take a look at that. So as I'm sure a lot of you guys uh, probably heard, Tesla went in and bought a ton of Bitcoin, which pushed Bitcoin up about 10% on the day. So let's see what this analyst is saying about uh, Apple. So they lifted their price target for Apple to a street high $171. This is RBC analysts, which is a 25% increase from where it was as of close Friday, pretty much as of close today as well, because it didn't do too much, right? What they are saying though, is that they can unlock a multi-billion dollar business by opening its wallet app to crypto trading. So that's what they're saying could really be the, the key there. And the reason that Tesla doing it is such a big deal because it's the first big company to really kind of you know buy Bitcoin. Um, a lot of other companies are moving in that direction as well. I think Square said 1% of, uh, you know, it'll be crypto in the future. I think JP Morgan recently said something about crypto as well. So crypto definitely is going to be a bigger part of our future. And the faster that company sort of adapt to it, right, it opens uh, them up to kind of increases in, uh, you know, the potential that they have to deliver. So the other thing is Apple can attract users to the service by buying $1 billion in Bitcoin itself, which I guess they're they're thinking, you know, they can kind of follow Tesla and do what they did, but we'll see if that works. But anyway, all that to say, 25% increase from where they are today, $171 from the uh, 154 that they had previously, right? So that's something that they um, are looking for. And again, a lot of this is based on their wallets um, adding cryptocurrency. With that being said, let's move right back to the charting for us real quick. And we will, let me just close these chromes because my computer is being super un unhelpful right now. Um, and maybe we get that. I don't know if you guys can hear the fan, but this thing is just not having it today. Okay, so let's zoom in just a little bit. Okay, sorry about that. I just closed a couple apps. Hopefully this is helpful. Let me zoom in and we will get right into it. So again, a small candle here for the day for us. Um, let's take a look at what future levels of support and resistance look like for Apple. So as you can see, um, the AEMA was right here in the 136.23 level, which you can find right there, um, those numbers. Um, 136.23 level, which we kind of bounced off of today um, after the initial dip in the day. Um, we've also got a level of support at one third in the low 136s, so 136.06. Um, between the AEMA and that level, I think that the low 136s should hold up as good support for us. But if it doesn't, we've got the 21 EMA coming in at 134.68, which is pretty close to the low point of today, right? We kind of got that bounce off 21 EMA, similar to the way we did here. Um, and then if we keep going, we've got a couple other levels of support in the 133s and then the 34 EMA in the mid 132s. So between those four levels of support, that's kind of what I'm looking at on a push down. So again, that's the 8 EMA and this 136s level, the 21 EMA at 134.68 the 133s level, and then the 34 EMA at 132.67. On the upside, right, what we have is, we've got to take out some of these highs from the previous day, which we were not able to do. Um, so technically, I mean, I could draw another line here in the 137.40s, um, because that's a level that was kind of the high point of the past two days. That's the first level that we have to take out is that mid 137s and then that kind of opens us up for 138.40s and then a push towards 140. If we can clear 140, right, 141 and then all time high in the mid 140s. But I think the key here is to first take out this 137 from the previous two days if we see a little bit of momentum upward, then go towards this 138.43 and I do think it's going to take a little bit of momentum for us to get through this 138.43 and then the 140 level would be next. Um, so that's what I'm looking at. Let me know what you guys think. You know, the RSI is, you know, looking fine, not overbought, not oversold. Um, Apple is, you know, kind of on technically that way up. So it should 
I, I, I'd like to see it hit 140s or at least make a push towards this 138 level this week and then kind of clear its way towards 140s, but we'll see how that goes. I know that, you know, it's not been doing too much, or at least we think it hasn't been doing too much, but if you take a look at this trend line, um, you know, it has been on that steady grind up um, eventually, you know, uh, periodically coming back to this line. So bounce, go up, come back down, go up, come back down, and then hopefully we keep pushing up. So I think, again, I'm holding my Apple shares bullish on Apple long term. It's not the fast mover that it was last year, but I think last year was an anomaly rather than kind of the way that Apple trades on a normal, or yeah, the way that Apple trades on a normal basis. It's more of a longer term investment and I see a lot of growth in the future. Um, so we'll see how that goes. Um, I'll keep you guys posted on that on daily Apple update videos. Again, if you wanna see more kind of stocks that I'm looking at, um, sign up for the Patreon. I'll share my option, some of the options trades that I'm taking on there as well. Um, sign up for Webull using my referral link if you like what you see on the charting tool here. Um, that's all I had for you guys today. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, don't forget to drop a like and subscribe to my channel if you are new. Comment down below what your thoughts on Apple are and I'd love to chat with you guys down there. Let's remember to be a bit better every single day and until next time.